All right, I'm gonna guarantee that not a lot of you out there have heard of this film, but I'm gonna talk about it anyway. So Biosphere is the new 2023 film directed by first-time director Mel Eslin, uh, starring Mark Duplass and Sterling K. Brown. It's a story about, you know, two guys who are stuck in this biosphere after the apocalypse has happened, apparently. And it's essentially a bottle movie, you know, that's two guys just in one room for the duration of the film, almost two hours, that it's them you know, interacting, and it dives into a lot of their issues, talks about uh, stuff going on with evolution, and it just it just goes in a lot of different places. It, it goes to some weird, weird places that I know a lot of people weren't expecting. But um, I think this is a film that not everybody's going to latch onto right away. Now, going into this, I was and am a big Mark Duplass fan. He's done a lot of great stuff that I've liked in the past. His acting, you know, you might have seen him in the FX show The League, which I always thought he was great in. But him and his brother are like producing partners. They've written stuff together. They've done movies together. And, you know, I've always thought Mark was interesting in terms of just the projects he creates. Like he's done so many weird little indie movies. I'm sure if you go down his IMDb page or his, uh, you know, filmography list, like there's some stuff in there that's you know really small, but a lot of it's been pretty good stuff that he's written. And he picks these projects that, you know, makes sense as a producer, as a writer. He has a budget in mind, and he even said in an interview I saw that, you know, he makes movies that he can afford to pay for himself, and that helps, you know, the whole process, so, you know, you're not losing money to a big studio and all that, but here you have a film that essentially does feel like a stage play. It's, you know, one location, it's two actors, two great actors, by the way. I think the way Duplass and uh, Sterling K. Brown bounce off one another, they have some great chemistry, and that's the highlight of the film here. Now, my big problems with this film probably come in terms of the story not, not there's not a whole lot there but they do explore so many different things that it feels weird how they jump from you know one thing to the next and how that all kind of connects and ends up at the end connecting some connecting to some stuff at the beginning and i as much as i enjoyed some of this film i did feel myself getting a little lost not lost in terms of like i don't understand what's happening it was more lost in just in terms of where are we going it, it, it does feel like there was no uh clear set path there's like several different messages they wanted to hit and in the end they do kind of wrap it up in a bow but in a way that i was like this was the message the whole time i i guess i get it but it is one of those things that's a little more complicated it's uh, definitely gonna need a repeat viewing for sure for me uh, to maybe fully nail down where i land on this because there, there's so much interesting good stuff in here but i did end up getting bored and nodding off at a point because it's just it's all dialogue it's all you know, there's no action scenes. It's a, you know, one little location. The the most exciting scene that happens is it's shrouded in darkness. And, you know, that not that it wasn't interesting. It just, that's not enough to get you going. You know, not enough, not that every movie needs action. But, you know, for this, it just, I just couldn't keep, you know, a hold on everything the whole time. So I think that'll turn a lot of other people off to hearing that. Um, but if you're at least interested and intrigued in, like, a more philosophical, you know, dialogue heavy film about you know two guys kind of coming to terms with each other and the state of like human beings and where human beings could be going and their relationship and how that evolved and where it was and is now so i don't know it's it's hard to to dive into without spoiling a lot of specifics about this but like i said i think duplass as a writer with his with a director here they co-wrote the film together they take some big swings in such a small budget movie and i admire a lot of that for it and i definitely didn't hate this movie i just did walk out going it wasn't the greatest thing i've ever seen i appreciate some of the stuff they tried to do but it just it didn't all quite lay in for me but i could see where other people might you know get a little bit more out of this and like i said if i saw this a second time maybe i would uh appreciate some of the stuff more now that i know what the film is i can go in because i had no expectations going i didn't know what to expect so i did feel a little overwhelmed at times a little bit you know, confused as to why certain things were going a certain way, but, you know, there's a lot of allegory, a lot of, you know, metaphors and stuff kind of happening inside this dome uh, that, you know, look at stuff going on in the world now, and I, I find that all interesting. I just don't think it all landed. That's why at the end of the day, I'm going to be giving this film a C+. Like I said, it's okay. I uh, didn't hate it, didn't love it, uh, but 
if you appreciate big swings, definitely one worth checking out. But what do you guys think? Have you ever seen a Mark Duplass film? Uh, are you a fan of Sterling K. Brown? Are you a fan of these kind of indie movies? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you could, please hit that like button, subscribe button, the little bell notification to be notified whenever I drop new videos. It would be greatly appreciated. And yeah, we're still kind of doing the Mission Impossible movies. I've got a lot of those coming and going to an early screening of that this week. So hopefully we can get that all knocked out soon. And until then, guys, I'll be seeing you.